Hello everyone, this is me Manoj English Coach. Welcome to Love English. And in today's lesson, I'm gonna be reading the story Abdul Kalam by Sudhamurti. Now let's get started. I have been writing columns for a number of newspapers and magazines for a while now. One of them was The Week magazine. Writing columns is not an easy job. One has to keep coming up with interesting anecdotes to write about. Sometimes the incident is so nice you feel like writing more. But you have to be careful about the word limit. Sometimes you don't get any ideas at all. Though the deadline may be nearing, only very few gifted people can write regular columns for a long time. Once I wrote a column for the week on the role of information technology in people's lives. It was called IT divide. It was based on a true incident that once happened to me. Soon after the column appeared, one morning I got a call from Delhi. The operator said, "Shri Abdul Kalam wants to talk to you." That time, Abdul Kalam was principal scientific secretary to the government of India. I had never met him in person till then. I had only read about him in the papers and seen him on TV. Of course, I started wondering why a person of his stature would want to talk to an ordinary person like me. We had nothing in common. It would be like a meeting between a Himalayan peak and the peak of Unkal Hill, which is in the small town of Hubli in North Karnataka. When Abdul Kalam came on the line I said Sir there's a mistake by the operator perhaps you want to speak to my husband Narayan Murthy I knew Murthy knew Mr Kalam from the other end a soft affectionate voice replied Wanna come there is absolutely no mistake I told the operator to connect to you only I was thrilled Sir you don't know me but I know a lot about you I have read about your life in the book Wings of Fire but I too know about you by reading your columns I read Anand Vikantan regularly where you talk about your dreams and your struggles Today when I read IT divide in the week I laughed and laughed you have written on a tough topic in such a humorous way i called my colleagues in the office and told them to read the column normally whenever your columns appear i read the last paragraph first because it contains the gist then i read the remaining portion as and when i get time that was the best compliment i had ever received when i write I always think of the end first and then the beginning. Kalam seemed to have guessed that in no time. I had heard from many people that he is extremely simple, wears only white and blue shirts and slippers. Soon I got to know that this was not an exaggeration. After our talk on the phone, I met him several times. Till today, the more I meet him, the more i'm convinced about the essential simplicity of the man an interaction with him is a joy and i always look forward to that i met him for the first time in bangalore he sent me word that he wanted to see me though he had a packed schedule i was waiting for him in a room when he came in looking cool in spite of a long tough day For a while we talked about literature and human qualities. He asked me in chase Tamil, how come you know such good Tamil? No sir, I replied. I can speak Tamil whereas I can understand. My translator Mr. Arokya Velu is an excellent translator. The credit for what appears in Anand Vikatan should go to him. As we chatted, a man without a prior appointment wanted to enter.
कलाम सिक्योरिटी पर्सनल वर रिलेक्टेड टू लेट हिम एंटर फाइनली मिस्टर कलाम से प्लीज अलाउ हिम इट डज नॉट मैटर ही माइट हैव कम फ्रॉम अ लॉन्ग डिस्टेंस अ मिडल एज मैन एंटर द रूम अलॉन्ग विद अ फोटोग्राफर He was holding a huge album and a bag. He told Kalam, "Sir, I own this institution," and kept the album in front of him. Please come for our prize distribution day. It will be a great honor for all of us. Kalam looked at a few pages of the album and said, "I'm short of time." so i will not be able to make it may god bless the children then the man requested for a photograph with kalam to which he agreed immediately the gentleman took a pink colored shawl from his bag and told the photographer to take his photo while he was laying the shawl on kalam's shoulder the photograph was duly taken and kalam thanked him and continued talking to me but my attention was still on the man i noticed that he took back the shawl and walked out of the room i could not control my anger sir he has taken the shawl which he presented to you kalam smiled at me and said it does not matter i don't need any one of them probably he needs it each time i meet him i am amazed at his straight forward behavior and his secular outlook he has a compassionate heart which particularly loves all children after that meeting whenever i was in chennai i would see him in his chamber in anna university where he was teaching we would talk about many issues the main one being about education particularly in the rural areas he is extremely grateful to his teachers and holds them in the highest respect once i was sharing my experiences in chandipur orissa and a lesson i learned from a young fisher boy called javed he was a poor school boy who helped his mother sell wet crabs for an entire day's work he received only 5 rupees yet he was happy and enthusiastic when i asked him how he could always remain so optimistic he said It is better to be worn out than to be rusted. As soon as I told this story to him, Kalam wrote Javed's words down on a piece of paper and exclaimed, "What a great piece of advice it was!" He told me that he likes Odisha immensely as he had spent many years in that state doing missile tests. If you are doing something in Odisha, I will definitely come. I know you work there. and that state is very dear to your heart too once i decided to visit rameshwaram along with a group of friends when kalam got to know he was very eager to go with us as it is his birthplace he said he would join us in madurai railway station he had made all the arrangements when his nomination for the post of president of india was announced he told me we will keep the plan open for rameshwaram by this time i was sure he was going to be the president of india irrespective of the election we could not ask him to join us as it could be major security problem for him sadly i had to tell him no sir please do not come we will go on our own by the time we returned from the trip he had as i had predicted been elected the president he invited me to his swearing in ceremony in the central hall of parliament what i saw when i stepped into the hall amazed me it was filled with children teachers his family members odd people like me and father george who used to be my student in bangalore and then was doing his research under kalam in anna university It was the most unusual oath taking ceremony. Everyone seemed to be close to Kalam. Normally such ceremonies are attended by industrialists, politicians and other VIPs. But here there were students, teachers, scientists, ordinary middle class people 
एंड फ्रेंड्स ऑफ कलाम आई सो मृणाल ने सारा भाई whose husband and late Dr. Vikram Sarabhai was also a great scientist and knew Kalam well. Her sister, Captain Lakshmi, had contested against Kalam for the post of president. She too was present in the audience. I came away from the function feeling deeply moved by the love I saw everyone showering on Kalam. After a few months, I asked my son, who is a teenager, to meet Kalam. My son said, "Amma, he is a president of our country. He is a learned and well-respected scientist. He is a very busy man. What will he talk about to a person like me?" Child, please understand. I knew him before he became the president, and I have met him after he became president. There is absolutely no change. He loves talking to people of your age. that is his mission he interacts with children through email and chat that is the reason i want you to meet him learn from him those qualities which you will never learn in any university somehow my son was not very convinced he is too big a man for me he muttered nevertheless he was there when we had dinner with kalam for the next two hours they hijacked the entire conversation Moti and I could only sit and listen. They discussed the best operating systems for computer, the great Tamil saint Thiruvalluvar and his teachings, the future of children of India, teaching methodologies in America, etc. After he left, my son told me, "Amma, I never felt that I was talking to the president of India. Rather, it was like talking to my grandfather, whom I loved so much." and lost four years back amma what you said was true and not at all an exaggeration when kalam went by train on a tour of bihar he invited me to go with him along with five other friends there is so another face of kalam he would work more than all of us his schedule would start at 6:30 or 7 am and end at 10:30 or 11 pm At 71 years, he was tireless and the most enthusiastic person in the team, all of whom were much younger to him. He would regularly address large groups of students, followed by question-answer sessions. He would take individual questions and answer them. Then he would make children recite some of the important lines after him. He reminded me of a loving school teacher or a doting grandfather. or an excellent friend to these children irrespective of the difference in age during bangalore's id.com i watched him taking an internet class for 1000 students he held their complete attention and was excellently prepared when we built a 150 bed pediatric hospital in bhubaneswar odisha for poor children I was very keen that he should come and inaugurate it. I remember his promise made to me in Chennai that he would come to Odisha if in, I invited him. But now he was the president of India and there were many people like me inviting him to similar functions. He was no longer a professor at any university whom I could approach on telephone or send an email and convey my message. However, remembering his promise, I sent him an email assuming it may not reach. But within a few days, I got a reply from his secretary saying that he had agreed to inaugurate the hospital. Coincidentally, it was the eve of Bodh Purnima, May 15, 2003. I've heard many stories about Buddha who was born 2500 years ago. I was fortunate that this great teacher and lover of children could at least inaugurate and appreciate our effort. Thank you for attending this session. Do share and subscribe to this channel for more lessons like this. Check out other video lessons by clicking on the video.